thought I should ask you a few questions. Um, so how can you gain control of your financial life? Can you do that? Uh, how is it possible? Yeah, so what should you be asking before you entrust your money uh, to a professional fund manager? And I think most of us, I mean, if you look at investments, few of us actually invest directly. You might do it through a fund. So you might have a pension fund, an insurance fund, a savings fund. And that is really putting your money or entrusting your money uh, into the hands of you know, a professional or a so-called professional fund manager. So what are the questions that you should be asking? So you sound a little bit more intelligent. Um, has the financial crisis taught us anything new in investing? I mean, in personal finance, yeah? So what are the lessons that we have learned, relearned, or unlearned? And that's what I want to share with you. And, well, of course, the last one is, do you ever wish you had an opportunity to take a personal finance course at high school or college? If no, then well, maybe you should enroll and see you. <laughs> I'm not selling this for Oliver, yeah, but this is something that, um, you know, well, I hope you can think about. Um, so our session today, I think if your ambition and your, uh, your expectations are very high, I think I'm going to bring it all the way down now because it will actually not teach you anything new. Are you going to walk out, maybe? <laughs> but uh, hopefully what it does is it sort of uh, highlights certain things, yeah? Things that you probably know, but you never had um, a conceptual basis for it, a theoretical understanding of it. Yeah, so it gives you some insights what the rich have, and what you're doing is probably what the rich are also doing, which is great. This is the reassurance that you can go on. So most of these principles are really common sense, uh, but of course we know common sense is not very common. That's why yeah, we are here. Um, and issues that you might have thought about already implemented. Uh, what I also do will hope that uh, it will give you is the impetus yeah, to, well, relook at how you're managing your money so that you can make better decisions in your life. Uh, I thought this quote was quite good. Ask not what this session could do for you, but what it could make you do. Yeah, so, all right, that's the action part of it. So what I'm going to do is share with you six lessons to financial freedom. <laughs> I've just encapsulated it at six, yeah, but I could, I could extend it to 12. Uh, but let me give you six because it's a nice number and I think it will keep our attention going because I don't know what your attention span is. Could be only 10 minutes. Then we only have one, <laughs> one lesson to financial freedom. All right, the first one is self-control. Uh, very, very difficult in this capitalist society, but can you learn self-control? And I think uh, one, of the, one of the ways of investing, I mean, you can only invest when you save. Otherwise, how do you invest? Where do you get the money from? Yeah, unless, of course, you've got a windfall from your grandfather or great-grandmother or something. But otherwise, you can only invest based on your savings, yeah? Unless you take on huge margins and run a lot of risk, I never you know, encourage that. So start saving. And how do you save? Well, it's really about uh, learning self-control. Um, so I think some of you will have thought through some of the questions, yeah. Is it really a need or do I really want it? And of course, the distinction between needs and wants are <laughs> less than uh, clear. Yeah, so do you really need the latest version of your iPhone when your current one is still functioning? Do you really need the eight Louis Vuitton handbag? I mean, you've got eight already. How many more can you carry? Yeah, so keep in mind that the sooner you learn the fine art of delaying gratification, whether it's instant satisfaction, well, the sooner you find it's easier to keep all your finances in order. Yeah, so. It might be easy to buy things on credit. Uh, one of the problems with credit, I think you realize, is the interest rates that you pay on credit card debt is extremely high. What is it in uh, Romania? 30. 30%. 30% 30 per annum, I hope. <laughs> Which works out, I mean, if anybody gives me a 30% return, I would love it, yeah? So it's impossible to get a 30% return uh, in today's market. So if that's the case, then why are you paying 30% for the cost of financing? Yeah, so you really should eliminate any credit cards <coughs> that you have, any credit cards. Uh, ideally, if you want to keep credit cards, I mean, I have a couple of lessons, one, lessons, two, kind of thing. Uh, the first lesson is if you want to keep the credit cards for the convenience it offers, sure, go ahead. Uh, but make sure you pay your balance in full. And always do not keep more cards than you can keep track of. Yeah, cut off your cards and just chuck it away. Um, I thought this was also something interesting. Sus Almond is a very famous personal uh, finance uh, expert, and I've taken a quote from her or some of her ideas that I could share with you. And what she says, and that's her face, yeah, this is very nice on the screen, but <laughs> she's actually very attractive. 
All right, she said, can you follow the secret and try to scale back? Yeah, so think about it. How can you simplify your life? Uh, because you are looking at your retirement and you're aiming for the future. So can you, for one day, don't spend any money? <laughs> can you try that? <laughs> if that sounds terribly impossible, then maybe the second one would be the incredible, I mean, it would be, well, if one is impossible, the other one is <laughs> more than impossible, yeah. But so, if we don't spend more money, all the companies will go bankruptcy. <laughs> You know, this, I mean, not everyone's going to be uh, thinking the way you do, right? So can you for yourself in one day not spend, but everyone's spending. So the next day somebody not spends, yeah? So it just runs. It's not like everybody doesn't spend all at once at the same time. That would be perfect. We're, we're in a consumer market. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a bit difficult, sure. Uh, I, I think in today's society, it makes it very difficult. But can you actually, it's, it's about self-control. Can you just don't spend for one day and see whether you can survive? Just a test. Or for one week, don't use your credit card. That's something more probable. Yeah, you might just do everything in cash so that you're not paying too much, far more than you should pay. Uh, because with credit card, you realize it's easy to sign, you know, but the cash is not transacting. So you never feel how much goes out of your pocket. Uh, for one month, you said, can you imagine yourself not eating out at any restaurants? I mean, restaurants, not a cafe, yeah? so a restaurant. Uh, it's all about awareness, I think, uh, awareness and appreciation. Well, the goal is to gain more by taking things away. Uh, you'll be happier with less. And you realize that maybe if you're retrenched, then this is a reality. You know, then you have to make the best out of what you have, uh, whether it's less money, whether it's less credit cards that you have. Uh, and that's something that you probably have to live with. Yeah, so think about it. Uh, see if you could actually simplify your life uh, slightly. Uh, the next lesson is don't put your financial future into somebody's hand. What do we mean by that? Yeah, um, I thought this little, um, can you see this computer? It's very small, yeah. but it says this guy is trying to fix a bulb. And it says, how many pension fund managers does it take to change a light bulb? And this guy says, well, I don't know, but we're looking at 40, not 100 watt. <laughs> the punchline's not quite there. <laughs> it's a light bulb. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, it's just a light bulb. It doesn't matter how many people. It doesn't matter what, how many watts it is. Yeah, a light bulb's a light bulb. And you just change the light bulb just like that. It doesn't matter whether it's 40 or 100 watts. But that, that tells you a little bit about uh, putting your future into someone's hands because you really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, if you don't learn to manage your own money, it's very likely someone will find, or people will find ways to help you mismanage it. Uh, whether these people are doing it because they are uninformed or because they're unscrupulous, uh, you really can't tell the difference because you have no idea <laughs> how to manage your money to begin with. Yeah, so instead of relying on others for advice, I think the uh, first good step is uh, understand how your money works for you. Uh, it's really key to making your money work for you. Yeah? Um, so there is this idea of personal planning. Uh, why do you have to have a personal financial plan? Uh, well, I kind of narrowed it down to NWUC. I wish I could come up with a more fancy acronym that sounds like um, a new pop group. But anyway, you need a financial plan because it's easier to spend than to save. Because you know, uh, if you don't have uh, a plan, then you're really just aiming for nothing. Yeah, so a plan helps you, it sort of keeps you in focus. You want a financial plan because you want to retire at 40, you want to get your first million at 35, that's what you want, yeah? So you want to achieve a goal. Uh, you use financial plan not to make money, but really to achieve goals. So, I mean, that's the goal that you have. And of course, um, a financial plan helps you control finances. Yeah, because if you don't let that do, if you don't control your finances, they will ultimately control you. Okay.